Our Sea Venom is one of the last Sea Venoms built. It was built in 1957. The type entered service with the Royal Navy in the early 50s and they served very successfully all the way through the 1950s. Ours was one of the last ones built. They only built another six after our particular example. It went to sea with the Royal Navy for three years from 58 through to 1961 and uh, it was um, very successful. They, it flew with the Royal Navy from two different carriers and about three different squadrons with the fleet air arm. It didn't actually see active service but it saw, uh, it didn't see action rather, but it saw active service in the Mediterranean and also in the Far East. Um, and it came out of service in late 1960 and uh, at that point it went into storage, into long-term storage in an airbase just outside Glasgow, what is now Glasgow Airport, but in those days was a Royal Naval Air Station. It stayed there for three years before moving on to Belfast because they were going to convert the naval base into, Glas into the new Glasgow Airport. And so it spent five years in long-term storage and then it came out of uh, storage and, and had another lease of life because it flew down at Yeovilton in the second line squadron providing general service duties for the Royal Navy down at Yeovilton and it flew from Yeovilton until 1970 and at 1970 it was finally retired for good and ever and it was uh, placed on the concrete plinth outside a naval shore establishment at Portsmouth called HMS Dryad, uh, what we know as a gate guardian of course uh, and it stayed as a gate guardian for eight years until 1978 when it was acquired by the de Havilland Museum and it came up here to London Colney. Of course by that stage it was in quite a state because it had been sitting out in the wind and the rain for eight years, not really being looked after very well. But it came to the museum and um, a certain amount of restoration took place on it then. I joined the museum volunteer team in 2006 and because I was always interested in aircraft of the fleet air arm I was immediately allocated to begin the restoration of the Sea Venom which was kind of a dream come true really, it was as much as I could have wished for really. Um, so I started in May 2006 and I thought it would be basically a quick strip down job coat of paint uh, and generally clean it up. But once I'd started I realised this was going to be a very serious undertaking because just like the vampire before it and indeed the mosquito during the war, the sea venom, despite being a jet aircraft, is actually built partly of balsa wood. It's the same plywood balsa wood structure as they, they used for the mosquitoes in the 1940s. Because of its time that it had spent outdoors, both here at the museum and at Dryad as, as a gate guardian, the plywood and the balsa wood were very badly rotted and so it all had to come off and be stripped right back to the inner plywood layer. Uh, in order that we could build back up with fresh wood, reskin it with the outer plywood layer and replace the fabric on the top. That was, that was just on the pod itself. All the rest of the aircraft is made of metal, so it's not too bad to, to deal with. Uh, there is a lot of corrosion still there, but it's largely just a case of stripping down paintwork and refurbishing. We haven't started on any of that. For the last 10 years, we've been concentrating on the pod. Um, but we have now finished the pod. The pod is now complete as regards its material restoration. The cockpit is now complete as well. We finished that at the end of last year and all we now have to do is replace the minor parts on the nose and the back firewall behind the, in front of the engine. Um, that will be us finished in the pod and that, as far as I'm concerned, will be the lion's share of the restoration. I think we'll, we can say safely that the restoration will be about 60 to 70 percent complete in time terms by the time we've finished that. The remaining work will be the metal work on the outside of the aircraft. Having finished the fuselage pod the logical next step would be for us to refurbish the inner wings of the aircraft but unfortunately these are rather large and due to space restrictions in the hangar at the moment we just couldn't get them in and lay them flat on the ground to do the restoration work so we're going to have to look at doing something else instead so what I have in mind is that we will bring in all of the other parts of the aircraft such as fuel tanks engine cowling panels things like that that we can bring in here they don't take up too much room they're relatively easy to restore in a in restricted space and a small amount of time then of course all we have to do is put the whole thing 
back together again. It will be a giant airfix kit with no instructions, but um, having taken lots of photographs and documented it fairly well when we took it to pieces, I think we should be okay on that. And that will give us a fully restored 1957 Sea Venom wooden naval jet fighter, which is quite, going to be quite an interesting exhibit. But we're not done there, of course, because we are the, the naval department of the museum. We have another airplane to do. We have the de Havilland Sea Vixen, the DH-110 Sea Vixen to do. Uh, that's sitting outside at the moment. It's been outside for many, many years. Much simpler than the Sea Vixen because there's no wood on it. It's an entirely metal airframe. So it's really a question of dismantling the cockpit and the radar. Um, refurbishing all of that and then a major strip down to bare metal and repaint job on the fuselage. Not too difficult, the main complication is the sheer physical size of the thing but we'll cope with that um, and she'll look absolutely immaculate when, when she's all done. Um, we'll have the two aircraft together, De Havilland at sea with the wings folded and all on display. So that's really where we're at at the moment. Check back in in a year's time and I'll do another one of these little chats and we'll see where we've got to.